welcome to the My RC Life YouTube channel since 2019, where we do all things RC and a little bit of everything in between. Let's go! All right, guys. What uh, is on the table here is the remnants of the assembly of Techno number two. So I recorded the whole thing and I'm going to uh, turn on the time lapse that I took and uh, do a little voiceover of the complete build. All right, we get started by putting the center diff together. Dropping the pins in. Spider gears and bevel gears. Putting the spur on here in a minute. Filled it with oil. Bolted the spur on. Now we're getting to the front and rear differentials. Fill them up with grease. The front and rear are the exact same except for one takes a little bit different viscosity of grease. Okay, we're quickly moving on to putting the differentials in their housings and getting them shimmed. This is quite technical when it comes to building a kit, shimming the diffs up just perfect and stuff, but it really makes for a lot better of a vehicle in the end. Okay, so we got the diffs in there and shimmed. Now we're starting to put the anti-roll bar together you got to measure them just perfect they give you a specific uh, measurement that's why I got the calipers out like they wanted at like 28.0 millimeters or whatever it is okay now we're starting to throw some a arms on putting together a pair of axle shafts. And hubs. Axle shafts and hubs. There's lots of like cool set screws that goes up uh, that go up against like uh, your pin that holds your C-hub on so it won't loosen up like Techno really covers all bases when it comes to their vehicles very technical throwing that uh, rear bumper on there looks like the whole rear end is almost complete here yep. now we're starting on the front end that anti roll bar all measured up, get it bolted on. Don't forget that Loctite. You see me always grabbing that Loctite up for just a second. Putting the shock towers on there. Building the axles and the hubs. in the instruction manual there your upper a-arm support bars they need to be the perfect measurement as well and as long as you try to get them as close as you can the truck will handle exceptionally well all right now we're putting the steering rack together dropping all the bearings in the bottom of the moving pieces rack bar together and the tie rod ends you gotta measure those you gotta assemble the tie rod ends and measure those they don't just come together in a bag like a Traxxas one may there I go I got almost the whole thing built there oh 
Oh, checking my kid's homework. <laughs> I guess I should have took that out of there. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, hey, it's just part of everyday life. Yeah, it looks like we're almost getting that front end pretty close to being done. Yep, installing the front bumper here in a second. And now comes that chassis. Not the stock one, but we went right to the M2C wide body chassis. Okay, now we got uh, the front end completely attached to the chassis, it looks like. Now I'm starting to assemble the rest of the center diff housing pieces. Getting that all assembled to the chassis. I'm putting my M2C center brace. You gotta have all the good M2C parts, you know. And I slowed it down right here. If you watch me, I'm filling the shocks now. And pay close attention to the bottle. I'm squeezing it right now and I'm thinking, don't squish this too hard, Mike. This uh, nipple, gosh, didn't you have this blow out on you once? The last time I built this, one of these trucks, I was squeezing too hard and it blew the nipple right out of the bottle and made a heck of a mess. And there it goes again. Look at it all over my hands. Finish topping off the shock. A good man never stops halfway through his job. Set my shock up in the spring there. And then I go for paper towel. It's all over the book, all over the table, up and down my arms, everywhere. It was a heck of a mess. All right, so back to the shocks and getting those all taken care of. You gotta drill a little bleeder hole in the caps, which really uh, works awesome for bleeding the shocks just perfectly. And I assembled the rest of the shocks, the springs in the bottom and the adjusters and everything on them and then attach the shocks to the truck. Now I'm building the next set of shocks, the other two. This time I just left the nipple out and poured the fluid in. I always cut all the parts off the parts tree and then I use my utility knife and trim up all the ends really good. And if you don't have one of those things to hold your shocks in those specially little stands, just use your uh, springs themselves. That works really good for me. It okay, looks like I got the rear shocks done. I'm attaching them. Alright, perfect. Now I'm starting to make the uh, put the side pieces on the chassis. And with the M2C chassis, you need to cut off just behind the battery tray too. Make everything fit with the new ESC. This is the other side right now where I'm putting the servo and stuff in. There's the battery side. Now, cut the other, there, I cut it off and I trimmed it. See, you can see back there, there's a, a loop, there's a space of silver. That's where I cut a chunk out. It shows you on the M2C uh, YouTube channel how to do it. Getting all the last few things figured out. Got the motor bolted in there. Steering. Hooking up the linkage for the servo and stuff. And then got to have a special M2C servo horn because the servo flips in backwards when you use this wide chassis. It's got to be an extra long servo horn. Now I'm uh, putting my body posts on. Put all my tires together here. Okay, and then I go to the RC room and fill the vent holes with hot glue so they don't take on sand and water. It's a hate and unbalanced tire. Back to uh, the truck, putting the, putting the tires on. Time for the ESC. Figuring how I'm going to get that mounted in there. Ok, 
Okay, I got the ESC tray bolted down in the back. That's why we have to cut a chunk of the battery tray out for their ESC relocation. For guys that want to run big ESCs like me. ESC is bolted in. I'm just wiring the receiver. And now I'm uh, zip tying all the wires in. Trimming out the body. And, and we're done. What's up guys, Traxxas Mike from IRC Life, and we got the first test run on Techno number two. Let's go. Flip down tight. Oh, I think we're getting hot already. All right. Hundred thirty six degrees, hundred and forty seven, hundred and forty eight. Motor's getting pretty warm. Hundred and twenty eight on ESC. 137. ESC is getting pretty warm too. Um, we actually melted one wire. So yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with a different motor option. I already talked with my sponsor about this. This was the motor that I had in the uh, Losi LMT. And I got rid of that. Or I sold that. 
and put the money into this but I pulled the motor and ESC out of that low C and uh, yeah this is 150 amp spectrum and this is a uh, 3800 kV motor now it does have all kinds of speed but it needs uh, it needs some more low end torque um, I mean it, to me it, it seems fine but it just it makes too much heat this motor is too high of a kV to get these big old tires and stuff spinning and to keep them spinning through a full four cell battery because battery ain't even warm it's 100 degrees you know barely over temperature so all right guys well that was the first shakedown test you see the new techno i can't wait for more videos to come with this bad boy uh him and its twin brother techno one and techno two all right guys i'm Traxxas mike from my rc life and i'll see you later bye guys thanks for watching another episode of my rc life don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.